Evening all, and welcome to a little tutorial on the logistics in Factory Town. I'm going to go over the basic logistic blocks and explain uh, what they are, what they do, and give a few examples of how I use them in the games. Um, I want to start by saying that this isn't a be all end all of how to use them. There are so many ways that they can be used, it's impossible to go over every which way in a single video. But I hope this will show you sort of the basics and how to use them and give you an idea of how to use them in your own towns and your own builds. I'd also highly recommend checking out the Discord server, Factory Town. There's a lots of examples of logic in there with some fat fantastic builds with some really complicated stuff from some people way smarter than I am. So, with that said, let's get started. So, once you've got your school up and running and a few researches going, you'll be able to unlock Intermediate Logistics. This gives you the first set of logistic blocks that allow you to change some things up to do things. Uh, basic Logistics has a few in there as well, but um, uh, Intermediate Logistics unlocks the major things for it, which are the Barrier Gate, Rail Stop, One Way Stop, Sorter, Pusher, Grabber, Splitter, Blocker and Filter. So, let's go through these and explain what they do and uh, how they sort of work. A lot of them are self-explanatory, but um, we'll go through. Starting with the top one, the barrier gate. This is exactly what it says. It's a barrier gate. If we go over to here, to my little example here, I've got two silos just with stone running around between the two of them. And if we put in a barrier gate, it acts like a barrier and stops them. You can turn the barrier gate on and off by toggling it here. Um, it can also be toggled off using some other logistic blocks, which we will get to later. But also, you can control click on blocks to enable and disable them. So, it's a nice little way to just turn things on and off and have a, a blocker there if you need to, to slow things down. Useful if you want to move a building, for instance, that silo there, and we can now move it somewhere else and don't have to worry about the contents in the toilet. Or if you want to empty a building out. The next block, um, I will come back to some of these as well because they can be used in line with the other ones as well. Uh, the next one is a rail stop, which um, is pretty self-explanatory. Once you get a rail system sorted out, and you have uh, your trains coming along, uh, sorry, minecarts coming along, because they're not all trains. Um, like so let's put a minecart on there. Boom. You'll see that when you put the rail down, a block already appears here. Um, this is the rail stop. This is currently set to input because the output of the silo is at that direction. If the silo was facing this way, I'll show you, if we put a silo facing that way, we get an output block. And basically the input means that a minecart will put in whatever's inside the minecart into the into the building. And output is the opposite, it takes it out. So right now it's going to put nothing in there because it's got nothing and there it's going to take it out. If we swap these round, you can click at the top corner here from input to output. And then swap this one round from output to input. And you'll see that the minecart will pick up the stone from the here. Oh, there it is, got 20 stone in it, and drop it off in there because that was an output, that was an input. Quite useful. The in and out option, um, I've had a few issues with, um, I'm not sure how it's good, but basically it do either doesn't work or it is actually taking out stone and then putting it back in there again. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it has something to do with the way barns or other buildings and um, do things there you see the barn here um, if you had for instance a resource in the top level say stone and the one below it would be uh, another resource I think it might input the top one and output or input the second one and output the top one I'm not sure I've had no luck getting that working so I'm not sure what the input output one is um, again I'm sure some other people know what it is or I'm just doing it wrong but that's that's the rail stop. So let's uh, oh, these round here. Um, you just saw there that I actually linked some of them together. That's something we'll get to in the advanced ones. If you click on a um, a logistic block and you have it um, selected, and you can mouse over other ones, and it adds a logic link. And um, that can be useful later on. We will get to that. If I take that there, we will take the stone back out of there and put it in this one here. So we're all good there. Awesome. Right and you can just select and delete them as normal. The next block is the one way. Now that's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a one way system. If I was to put it there and then had a rail come off there. Um, in fact, let's remove that first. Do that. Now 
Now, the cart will ignore this because carts and uh, other this works for carts and shoots and other bits pieces. They will always travel forward first. Uh, it doesn't work for uh, belts because they have a direction, but railways and shoots, the blocks will always travel forwards. A one way system means exactly what it says on the tin, it forces them to go one way. So it will force them to go that way if they can. It goes down it, and he'll be stuck in a loop going that way. I'm going to remove it. If I put it here, however, it won't work because the rail system doesn't allow. See, he gets stuck because there's no way for him to turn right because of the way I put the rail down. So, yeah, that's the one with Very useful if you're building a long road with carts on it. Uh, you can uh, buy build. I won't build a long one, we'll build a short one. Build a three way road, like so, like this. Um, and if you had buildings either side, the carts would go and come down the road and would drop off their goods then come back to the road and drive back down this side of the road what you can do is you can put in the one-way blocks um, like this at either end and then put in a well I would use a fence for instance but you can put in anything you like down the centre like so and then that will cause the carts to come up stop drop their goods off and then when they come back onto the road they've got to go that way because they can't go down here so they go up there round and back down again and it just helps carts to stop them getting stuck if you've got little roads. It means you can build a one-way system. Very useful for doing that. I've done it in my Let's Play series. And it, it works well if a little bit dodgy when you're doing a very long distances. But yeah, one-way systems are very, very helpful. The next logistic box is the sorter. Um, the sorter is a uh, block that will, as it says on the tooltip, force matching items to take the specified path. Uh, oh, push wrong button there. Um, so if I uh, this out here, I don't remember. You need to put here, and it here isn't it? A tidy up here. You can see I can bypass the barrier gate there uh, because it's blocked. Now they will go around there. If we open that by control clicking on it, um, blocks will go. Great one. Let me. Get rid of because they're backing up on themselves. There we go. They'll go straight on. They won't turn down here unless they get backed up. Then they'll turn down. So yeah. But a, a sorter will push blocks the direction they're going. Um, I believe if it's blocked, they stop. I oh, know the sorter pushes all the time, so it, it will stop them traveling on that on a normal way. It will always push them one direction. You can filter them. In the top right corner here you can change a filter here and say well I want to filter wood to go that way because none of these blocks are wood it's going to let them through if they were wood it would push them off very useful if you have a uh, block with um, a, a shoot or a belt with multiple items on it you can filter the, the, the items off of it so you can say well if I've got say uh, animal feed and flour on a on a belt. I could push the flour off of it and not worry about it. Uh, let me clear that block off there so that all starts flying again. There we go, much better. Uh, so yeah, the sorter will always push things in the direction, and if it's filtered, it will only push the filtered option. You remove that and then go to the next block, which is the pusher. The pusher is exactly the same as the sorter, except if the way that the pusher is pushing is blocked, it will then allow blocks to go through. Uh, very useful if you want to fill up something else. So let's grab a crate. A crate that is. Crates have much smaller resources. So we could say, hey, always go down here until this crate is full. Once the crate's full, it will back up this line and then cause them to carry on again. So you, if you had a building here you wanted to give priority, you could say, hey, stone goes into this building first. When the building's full, carry on down the line, go and do whatever you're doing. So everything's happy with that. Um, you notice as well the crate, even though I faced it on the line, it's not going to auto output because crates don't do that. Crates are, um, they only store 20 and they don't have an auto output. Uh, anyway, the next block, sorry, getting carried away there. Uh, the grabber, the grabber is, uh, well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It grabs things. If I turn this around, now unfortunately, if I was to turn it around when the game was unpaused, because it's allowed to push out this way, it causes all these to break and go wrong. So I'll pause it there and that will cause that to go there. 
and uh, the grabber, well actually the grabber I could use on the uh, the crate. If I was to grab from there, um, it will grab out of an adjacent inventory. So you see it's grabbing here from the crate and taking it out onto the line there. So that's all working. And also I could grab here and say, hey, here we go. Go down there, go into the crate, and then the grabber will take it out of the crate. So how we had one carry on then? Oh, I think that's because I'm putting them back on a line. So it's possible for items to move the wrong direction. If you do have a shoot and you're joining it on like I am here, um, what you really want to do is grab another single piece of shoot, angle it the direction you exactly want, pressing R to rotate around, a bit like that. And that means that any stone that comes on it can only turn that direction, it can only turn to the right here, so I won't get any backing up turning left. Uh, grabbers do have to be facing the right way. If I put it there, it won't grab anything because it only grabs from behind. But it doesn't have to be facing the same direction as the chute or the belt that it's on because it will push um, onto the belt underneath it and then along. So, yeah, grabbers. Grabbers can also be used on multiple levels. Uh, it is possible to grab from, well, officially you can grab from three different heights. Um, grab, would not, you can grab from there, there, there. I believe it is. So, one, two, three, four, in fact, five, I believe it is. You can put shoots in there, uh, well, shoots or belts with grabbers on and grab from five different heights, I believe it is. So, five with the bottom one, yeah, so it's um, interesting. And obviously, the bottom row obviously auto outputs if it's facing the correct direction. So, so a small interjection here um, you can actually grab from four different layers, not three or five, like I was saying there, using a system like this where you put down a shoot uh, or belt at the bottom you have a belt at the bottom there uh, you then have a you have to use the wooden pillars like so and a grabber and then you can just rinse and repeat that all the way through and build up there so you just go uh, put the wooden pillars down put the belt on and that does actually work it does actually allow the goods to travel underneath it and then you put a grabber then rinse and repeat and it, like that, up to four times and that works on any building uh, any building can have up to four outputs going at once of course four outputs on a single side so you can have four outputs on a silo um, grabbing things obviously that's not going to keep up because we've only got one input but for a barn for instance you can do it on any side um, that is compatible with it so you could have uh, 4, 8, 12 inputs on one side um, uh, output, sorry, on one side and uh, you have 12, uh, 24, we well, can have 48 inputs onto a barn if you really wanted to uh, sorry, 47 because you cannot input on the very bottom block at the front where the arrow is, you can't input there so 47 inputs, uh, 48 outputs um, so yeah, that's basically how that works there it's not 3 or 5, it is 4 Grabbers are more useful if you're doing things higher up than on the ground level. Just put this for there. Uh, the next one, the splitter. Ah, the splitter is an interesting one. Um, if we... Uh, let's turn off that grabber. Oh, grabbers as well, sorry. We'll jump back in there. Grabbers can be filtered, so they can grab certain items. Very useful for barns if you've got multiple items. You can say, just grab the stone out of it, don't grab the wood. It's in there. And they can be turned off and on and off. By control, uh, not control clicking, by ticking up here. On them. So, dead, dead useful dead. Now, the splitter is exactly what it says on the tin. It splits. So you can see there, it's got an arrow, it's got left, right, and forward. Uh, it will go one left, one right, one forward. I believe that's the order for it. Left, right, forward, left, right, forward, I think. Might be left, forward, right, but, but either way, it does one of each if it's available. If you put it on, there's a way not available, it'll just ignore it and it will go. Here it will go right straight on, right straight on. And it does do things evenly providing there are spaces for them. So if I turn that on, it will go straight on right, straight on right. So yeah, you see there's one at a time, one at a time, left, right. And if this one gets blocked, it will then only push to the right because that way is blocked. Um, these can be filtered. I don't really know why you'd want to filter a splitter because of the way it works things, but they can. So, 
Um, yeah, I suppose you could use them in conjunction with some of the other blocks. So you could split, say for instance, if you had stone and wood on the same line, you could filter the stone, so the stone will go left, right, and then put another block in front to stop it. Which uh, I think are, yeah, the blocker. The blocker is the next block, so let's let's grab a blocker as well. So if I get rid of that barrier gate and put a blocker in. Uh, blocker basically says no. No blocks are allowed to come down here, so they've all got to go this way. If you filter this, it only filters the block or only allow yeah it, it blocks the filtered item so if I say actually we're going to filter wood here it will let stone through because it's um, going to let the stone carry on because it's not the filtered item so you could say for instance we could block this as stone so stone will have to go that way and then if it's wood for instance like it will go straight on so you could split, split the stone left and right and then wood would carry on if you had multiple things on the same line, don't recommend doing that at all. Never have multiple things on the same belt if possible. Um, always try and have your grabbers grab things filtered wise. Uh, another note about the grabber, which I forgot about, they do start grabbing straight away. Move that one there and I put a grabber down. Without the game being paused, they will just start instantly grabbing. Not so bad for a silo, but if you have a barn that has multiple items in it, it will just grab from the top down. So I'd suggest you pause the game before you put a grabber down, then you can filter it to get the item you want. So I can say, well, filter wood, that won't grab anything because there's no wood in there, but it won't allow anything to go on the line and go wrong, so you won't have multiple things on the lines. So yeah, always recommend pausing the game when you put down that grabber. Um, the blocker, as I said, will block um, whatever item, will block everything or will block whatever item it is filtered to. So it will allow everything else and only block stone. Again, quite useful if you've got, don't need the splitter there. So we'd have stone come down here and that will block stone so stone will go across here. And if it was someone else, like wood for instance, it would carry straight on. Useful for filtering out things if again you've got multiple things on the same place. Uh, it's possible to happen with foresters if you've got trees and apple trees for instance. It will grab apples on from the same thing. And also farms and mines quite common to get mines with coal and iron together so it is possible if you wanted to have multiple ones there uh, I'd recommend just using grabbers um, rather than use the main output for it to put that uh, the grabber would also overwrite the main output see here if I go here um, it can't output because the grabber is overriding its own push so it can't grab any stone if you remove that grabber it will just do the stone put a grabber in it will carry on because it's stone whereas if you filter it and go anything else you know, carrots. It will stop because that's not there's not carrots in there, there are stone in there, and it overwrites things. So you can do that for a mine useful as well. Uh, the last block is the filter. Um, only allows specific items to pass. So it's the exact opposite to a blocker. So if we did that and then say we want to do um, carrots, for instance, and uh, I then got rid of that grabber. It won't allow carrots to pass. It won't allow stone to pass because stones are not carrots. So it will just block them from going. So the exact opposite to a blocker. This becomes much more useful later on in when you've got mana lines and things like that. Um, so and you have things crossing, which is quite useful. Can also be used on train tracks as well. Um, you can filter things via the minecarts. So if I grab a filter here for instance, and went bonk. We filter this minecart here. Now the minecarts have two inventories. Use the one that's in the inventory, not the item filter. That sounds odd, but if you use the item filter for, let's say this is going to be metal conveyor belts, and we say you're going to be berries. Now that should stop that from passing, and it is going to this time. Okay, so maybe that's something that's been fixed I had issues where the inventory and the item filter were two separate things and it seemed like the inventory was a better one to filter with um, I think your best bet when using minecarts is to just do both okay, grab grab the inventory, just click on the inventory and set that to the same sort of things so say milk of airbots just so they're, they're both the same thing because yeah, I've had issues with it before. It may have just been an issue that I was having, I don't know. But as you see here, the filter is preventing that cart from going along this way. So 
um, again, would be useful if I had a, another cart and said you are actually going to be in berries. Then he can go through, um, or oh, actually, no, he can't. There we go, there's an example. He is set to berries, but he can't go through. If I set the inventory, I believe, to berries, then he can go through. There's what I mean by that weird issue. Um, the item filter doesn't appear to be applicable anymore, it's just the inventory. Um, so, yeah, do both. Set both, that's my recommendation. Set both and then you'll be okay. You see here, that filter is only allowing berries through. It thinks that minecart is a berry because it's got berry in the inventory. Even though it's empty, it still filters and says it's correct. And uh, it can go through and uh, is happy. Whereas this minecart, who is metal conveyors, can't. He's going to go round around in circles for the rest of time. And uh, that works for blockers as well. If you put a blocker up here and then block, say, um, uh, well, let's do that. Let's do that. Shall we? Let's uh, remove that. Oh. And we'll put in the blocker. That was the filter. That was the wrong button. The blocker. And, uh, uh, well, we say blocker is going to block everything. So it's just going to block the lot. Okay. But now, if I say, actually, just do me a favor, block berries, then this one will go through because he's not berries. Whereas this one is berries, so he gets blocked. Exactly the opposite to the filter. So that blocks everything apart from berries. No, that only blocks berries and lets everything through. Whereas the filter is the opposite, it only lets through what's on it. So yeah, depends on what you want to do. If, if you want to just block one item, then that's the best way to do it. If you want to just have one item carry on and everything else go the other way, then the filter is the way to go. And uh, that's it for the basic logistics. Um, I will go into complete blocks, but I think I'm going to do that in a separate video because these are much more detailed. So, um, yeah. Okay, I hope that's explained a little bit for you here. Um, you can see here, these are some of the advanced ones here. We can trigger things automatically. But, um, yeah, I hope that's explained a few things for you, how the basic logistics stuff works. And... Uh, I can't wait to see what you come up with them. So, uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, have fun.